Hi, and welcome to the online MBA Spotlight with Poets and Quants. Joining me today is Carla Mueller. She is the Director of Admissions at the Jack Welsh Management Institute in Virginia. Carla herself is a Jack Welsh grad that's been working uh, with the program actually since the very beginning for 12 years. The online program is highly ranked in the nation. It placed sixth last year in our best online MBA rankings after some excellent feedback uh, given from their alumni. Tuition falls at right around $46,000. Also joining us is 2018 grad Travis Baldwin. Travis now serves as founder and president of Enzo Global in Texas. So thank you both for being here uh, today. And Carla, I wanted to go to you. Uh, could you start by just telling us generally about the program? Yes, I'd love to. Thank you, and Anna. So as you mentioned, uh, I have been with the program since almost the beginning. So going on 12 years now, uh, started with Jack and Susie supporting the program. We started with, I think, 130 students. And now we have almost 4,000 graduates or 39 something now. And uh, we have about 1,800 students in the program at any given time, even though our class sizes are small, 20, 20 students uh, or so per class. The program is really designed to be very flexible, practical. That was Jack's vision. When he created this program, he wanted a program for busy working professionals that was going to be something where they could apply it immediately to what they're doing and see immediate results. And so all of our faculty are, you know, that's one of our biggest differentiators is our faculty. They're all experts in the field that they teach. And um, they teach things in a way that's very practical, immediately actionable. Uh, it's a 12 course MBA program designed to get through in anywhere from 18 months to 36 months and beyond. Um, students really have that flexibility. So every quarter students have the option to take either one or two classes. Um, they, you know, pace it as they go, whatever is going to work for their schedule. If they need to sit out a quarter, that's also fine. So um, the program, the intention of the program is to really help students, you know, trampoline in their career as they're going through the program. And it's been phenomenally successful in doing so. In fact, when you hear from Travis uh, Baldwin, you'll hear some of his experiences. But uh, uh, that's that was Jack's vision. Learn today, apply tomorrow. Our faculty, as I mentioned, they've actually been ranked one and two by Poets and Quants in the last two years. And they're all experts in the field that they teach. So you know who you're learning from and how you're learning is really our big differentiator. Yeah, thanks, Carla. And it sounds like the program was really uh, keen on flexibility even before the pandemic, well before the pandemic and before maybe other programs decided to be keen on it as well. Carla, I want to know, you know, what would you say is a key aspect of the program that perhaps stands out um, when compared to others? Well, one of them, as I mentioned, is our faculty. So they're all experts in the field. They have 20 years, you know, on average or more experience. They're coming from, you know, C-suite positions, executive positions in top companies. Um, and, and in addition, and they give lots of hands-on coaching and guidance and mentoring to students. So not only within the class shell, of course, the asynchronous format, everybody's logging in whenever it's convenient for uh, for the student, but they're having really lively discussions on, on the discussion board. But also those, those faculty are available seven days a week, either by email or phone. They encourage and promote the one-on-one -on -one kind of mentoring and, uh, of students and mentor them well beyond the classes. So the kinds of hands-on support that students are giving, we also surround students with advisors and communications coaches and numbers coaches. So a tremendous amount of support, I would say, is uh, another differentiator of ours, as well as um, the, our, the, our international students. We have students from 83 countries around the world, one of one of the most, if not the most uh, diverse of the online MBA programs, and, you know, really brings to life the cultural and um, global experience to the student. They're learning, they're in class with students from, you know, countries all over the world. So that that's really unique to, to our program as well. The student profile for our students, at average age is 41. Uh, our typical student has 17 or more years of experience. So that's also a little bit different. It makes it a little bit unique in, in terms of the, the networking that comes along with it. And I know, uh, 
Travis is going to share more about our networking later on, but uh, we have a fantastic networking group outside of the classroom. We have a proprietary platform called Jaden My Connect, where all of our students, alumni, faculty can get together. We had 77 live virtual events last year. There's different groups. There's different virtual networking events that students can join almost every week. So that is also another thing kind of unique to our program is the, the high level of networking that's available to students and mentorship. Yeah, thank you. Wow, that's a lot of national. <laughs> Great to hear. Um, that's that's eight, nearly eighty some, more than eighty. That's that's a great number to hear, and um, I'll be excited to hear about the networking a little bit later on. Uh, going to Travis now to you. I wondered if we could get um, get a sense of you know why you decided to pursue an online MBA in the first place. What about your background led you there? Um, and then you know once you got there, could you talk us through the thought process? Uh, behind how you ended up choosing Jack Welsh Management Management Institute? Sure. Um, well, my journey was, I guess, a little atypical in the sense that I didn't immediately go and get my, my bachelor's and at 22 go on for an MBA or something. Um, I did go to school, but ended up, of course, like most people, not ended up working with what you went to school for once you get out into the real world. Um, so I quickly found myself in sales, uh, doing well at it, specifically in SaaS-based sales, and just kind of started a career with that um, and did well at it. And I had gotten to a point where I had done well enough personally that I was starting to be put in charge of managing other salespeople and other teams and building that out. And you get to a point where you start to realize, A, you want more of that and you want to continue to progress, but also sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. Uh, without education and knowledge, you don't know what the answers are, how to see around those hills or how to overcome certain challenges. You can learn trial by fire, but that's always slow. It comes with a lot of challenges along the way. So obviously an MBA made sense. It would give you the understanding of business at a larger level to really play the game and to be a benefit to the company and to help me pursue my personal goals. So I started looking at other MBA programs, um, looked at quite a few, but with my work and I had already reached a spot where I was working 60 plus hour weeks and traveling a lot, even internationally for work. So being able to go to a traditional brick and mortar education and say, okay, every Tuesday at three o'clock, I've got class. I just, I simply couldn't do that. Um, so as I started to look around, I started to look at some of the virtual options. I uh, wanted to make sure the accreditation was there. I didn't want to put my money into something that wasn't going to be a value set and respected in the business community. Um, so that started to whittle down choices, you know, to really some top elements. And ultimately what caused me to pick Jack, uh, the JW My Jack Welch Management Institute was, it really checked all the boxes for me and so many more. Um, so what I mean by that is first and foremost, as I talked to the admissions team and found out more about the program, I realized this was not Jack Welch's name on a building or on a school. Um, this was a program entirely conceived, built and developed by Jack Welch. He handpicked the professors, he handpicked the administration staff, he and experts went over the curriculum from everything that worked well at GE and taking it to number one in the world and lessons learned there after multiple decades. So what you find is that you're getting a curriculum that is based on sound universal business practices that any MBA should know coupled with all those ancillary lessons that just have Jack's touch all over them. So that was highly appealing to me. The next was that asynchronous model we touched on earlier, the flexibility that that gave. It meant that it didn't matter where in the world I was, what time zone it was, if I needed to pack it in on a flight and do some reading or write a paper. I mean, I was able to take it with me wherever I was at any point in time. And I was able to carve out the time every week that made sense for my schedule that empowered me to really perform at my best, to say, this is my learning time. This is rather than trying to rush through everything, I could say, well, this week I need to do it here or there. And I had complete flexibility to do that. So it was very empowering. And ultimately with that, I guess, if you're gonna look at factors, like everybody else, it's, it's cost. I mean, you want that return on value. And as I did a lot of research and I looked at what everything JWMI offered, the cost of the program, it provides so much more than cost. It's about value. And if you look at ROI, you look at the return on value that the students are getting, and you look at the cost of the program and what it offers compared to the other top 20, really even other top 20 schools, it's the best bang for your buck. So for me, it was just a bit of a no brainer that's done nothing but bear continuous fruit and a whole lot of fun. So we can <laughs> talk about that a little later. I don't want to monopolize too much time. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks for that, Travis. Um, you know, keeping keeping on with that learning experience um, element you had mentioned, uh, what did your classes look like? And being that you were a working professional, working maybe even 60 hour weeks, how did you navigate uh, figuring out what worked for you in terms of your day to day? Here's my work. Here's my school life. Here's my family life. Um, how did you balance all that? Sure. Yeah. And those are great questions for anyone looking at a program, because I think that was one of the things that stopped me from moving forward for a little bit of time that you can always look back and God, I wish I had made this decision sooner. Um, but it is that how am I going to fit all this together? So we talked a little bit about the asynchronous model of JWMI giving you the flexibility to carve the time out when it works for you. As far as a time commitment, I'd say probably, and Carla, correct me if I'm wrong, but about 10, 10 hours a week is probably a good target amount of time, which I think most of us, if we were really looking at our schedules, can say, I don't watch this show and I don't do that. And, you know, you can quickly carve out 10 hours for something that is meaningful for you that will change your future. This is an investment in you. And one of the biggest things, too, about JWMI is the curriculum is not just case study and theorem. It goes so much further farther than that. Every week you're learning these great business practices, but then saying, what do I do with this information? How does this pertain to me, my job, my role? How can I leverage this? And you're talking about it in a very intimate classroom setting on the discussion boards. And that's an environment where everybody has their voice. We all have questions we have to answer every week as part of the reading and the learning. And then you respond to some classmates and some really great engagement happens with that. But that learning process is very different than a traditional brick and mortar school because you're not just watching a professor who's lecturing, you're taking notes furiously, maybe two or three of the same people raise their hand and talk while everybody else is quiet. Uh, you got your introverts at the back of the class that'll never say anything. And it just, it's a very different environment for learning. And that's the beauty of Jack Welch is you're not there in the classroom, so to speak, face to face with people. So even the most introverted person can be calm and just put their voice out there. Everyone has a voice in the classroom. And the beauty of that is not only do you have this top tier curriculum, and Carlos talked about our amazing professors, but also the classroom is filled with type A personalities from all over the world and different <laughs> industries, different walks of life that are bringing their knowledge and their perspective and their expertise into the conversation. So you're having these amazing, engaging conversations and you're walking away every week with a playbook that just says, here's what I need to do with this information at my job. So you're immediately kind of turning around and putting that um, into play and, and having a lot of fun with it. So ultimately, I guess the easiest, most succinct way to say that is you find the two come together. Those 10 hours a week of work in your, your work, they stop being two separate things and start coming together very quickly into one time and cumbersome activity that just shows continuous improvement. So it's, it's a very engaging platform. It's very unique. And I might go off script here and, and note that Carla actually shared beforehand that her and Travis were in the same cohort. And so Carla, <laughs> I'd like to ask, you know, is there anything you'd like to add on? Um, I'd love to hear about your learning experience. It's, you know, probably different from Travis, but maybe same in similar aspects. Yeah, absolutely. I love talking about it. And, you know, I found for me, and, and when I'm talking to new students, I'm like, you're going to find out your own, you know, rhythm. And once you have been doing it for a couple of weeks, it's going to become like brushing your teeth. They're just going to, but for me, it was time blocking. I had to, you know, time block when I was going to sit down and, and, you know, do my work. I found I could be my best, you know, student. I, I'm, a, I'm a late night person. So, but, but some of my friends in the program were, you know, get up early in the morning or do a little bit at lunchtime. I also, you know, tended to be a little bit more of a weekend voice lawyer um, because I work so many hours a week and my lights just went off. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, and uh, you, we have four four children, four girls. Um, we lead, One of them left at home when my husband went through the program with Travis and I. Um, so we would do table time and we would have table time and do, we would all be doing our homework together. We'd all be sitting together at the kitchen table with our laptops and our, our, da our youngest daughter's grades like shot through the roof when we were going through the MBA program. So you find a way to work it into your life and, it's, and, and, and then you find it starts becoming part of your um, applying it to what you're doing at work and then it all just kind of merges into one so it's not a separation between school and work and and work and family for me anyways it all kind of merged into one yeah uh, and Carla I wanted to pivot here and ask you again about the networking opportunities you had mentioned earlier and um, being that Jack Wells is just only online um, what kind of opportunities for mentorship career development maybe emergent networking does it offer um, you know that would equate to maybe a front and center in-person MBA program. 
uh, even more so than you, than you would ever expect is way more than I ever got in my traditional undergraduate at the University of Colorado. Colorado. Um, we, our virtual networking platform, as I mentioned earlier, it's a proprietary platform. It's award-winning platform. Travis can actually tell you more because he is the president of the student advisory board. We have a student advisory board um, that helps us. We have different events um, either being hosted by our student advisory board, networking events, cocktails and conversations. Of course, they're all virtual. Um, but then our professors will also host different webinars. And then we have within that networking group, students can be matched up with mentors tours of, for, with the, the highly engaged alumni, um, their specialty groups that they can join. Uh, and like I said, we had 77 virtual events last year, but we also have in-person events. And, and I'd love for Travis, if you can pick up, because I think you're really well versed at talking uh, to our hub cities, our hundred um, hub cities around the world and the in-person events. Yeah, I'm happy to, Carla. So yeah, it, 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 to your question, Anna, it, it is a virtual program. It is asynchronous and empowering in that way. But there are a lot of virtual events that people can take part in that we just discussed. There's a couple of them every month. Um, they're just casual get togethers. If you can make the time and come out, you'll meet people from all over the world, alumni and students, some of the professors. Um, but one of those things a lot of people think is it's an asynchronous model, it's virtual. I'm not going to see people, I'm not going to meet people. And networking is important in MBA. Um, with JWMI, it's, you get the best of both worlds because we have, as Carla mentioned, more than 70 events every single year going on. So there's always something you can tap into and connect. But then on top of that, we have over 120 JWMI ambassadors all over the world. And their whole role is basically they help set up local on-ground events. So coffee before work, lunches, get-togethers afterwards, weekends in the park, boating events, whatever works in that little local community. Um, so it is a way to get face-to-face -face with fellow students and alumni uh, who have already graduated, you never meet, um, and even professors that live close by show up to them sometimes too. So it's just a great way to interact, change business cards, and meet the fastest growing MBA program out there. There's a lot of ways to get you tapped in. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that input, guys. Um, and Carla, now I'm going to pivot again to technology. Uh, being that the program um, is 12 years old, it's probably seen a lot of evolution and different platforms and mechanisms for uh, online classes. How have you seen that changed um, at Jack Welsh? Yeah, we are constantly evolving. And that is one of Jack Welch's tenets is to be constantly, continually improving. In fact, we're constantly, Travis will tell you, we're constantly surveying our students every single quarter, asking their students, how can we make the experience better? What would make this a better user experience for you? How can we improve the, the content of our curriculum? So we're constantly evolving all the time. So um, in fact, we just went through, we just switched to a new platform uh, because it was much more user-friendly. And I, you know, foresee in the future, you know, exciting things, um, you know, coming down the road to make our content even more relevant and, and um, be creative in the way we deliver the content. But we're constantly improving it, making it, making sure it's cutting edge, fresh, relevant business cases. You know, our we don't have traditional textbooks for the most part. They're relevant business books um, uh, that students mm -hmm. are reading. And so it's designed to be very you know, cutting edge and constantly improving. I you know, just got back from a leadership conference and we we're talking about the things that are coming down the road and, um, you know, things like incorporating AI and, uh, you know, virtual experiences and, you know, customizing the student learner experiences because, as you know, students, there are, you know, so many different ways that students can learn and for the neurodiverse, it's really going to continually improve. And that's our, you know, that's what we do. We improve every day to get better. But the technology that and uh, the exciting things that are coming down the road are going to make it even more, um, you know, real and relevant to students in the future. And Carla, maybe just as a second thought here, I never, I didn't ask you about the certain concentrations, if any, that the program has. And then um, I, don't, I don't know if you mentioned earlier the amount of credits required to graduate. Uh, well, thank you for asking this question. So, yes, yeah, so it's a 12 course MBA. We have four different concentrations. So our original MBA, we now call the leadership uh, concentration dif to differentiate it from our three other concentrations. So we have the leadership MBA. We have an MBA with a concentration in operations management. 
we have a, an operation, I'm sorry, we have a concentration in healthcare, and then we have one in human resources. And so the the all, all four of those MBAs are 12 courses, regardless of concentration. And um, in addition to that, we also have graduate certificate programs. So those are where you just take the three concentration courses only from the 12 course MBA, and then you have a completed graduate certificate after three classes. So you can be done in six to nine months. The beautiful thing about that is they're actually MBA classes. You're actually, those graduate students are in with other MBA students and those classes do count towards the MBA. So a student could, you know, earn a graduate certificate and then decide, hey, I want to continue on and, and, and finish up my MBA and they are already a quarter of the way through it. So it's kind of like a stackable degree for, or we have a, actually have a lot of students who come to us and they already have an MBA. So, but they want that, they're craving that Jack Welch uh, learning experience. And so those graduate certificates are great for for those folks as well. Yeah, that's good to know. And Travis, um, you know, you talked a little bit about how the MBA just seemed like a natural fit for your career, it just seemed like that was where you wanted to go. Could you talk now about the impact that it's had um, either in your jobs or as you, you know, get a leg up in the career ladder or as you even approach your current role? Oh, wow. Um, this program was was personally game changing for me um, in so many ways. And just to set the stage, I'm I'm not unique in what I'm about to share. In fact, three out of four students are saying they're getting promotions and raises just while going through the program. And I think that's a key differentiator for JWMI is it is not the traditional. I'm going to go and get my MBA. I've earned that degree. Now I'm worth more money. I want a promotion. The traditional track and staging that you see, it's quite the inverse because this is immediately applicable. And from that very first class in leadership, you're going to get stuff in week one and two, you can start applying and using. So what you see is that people's careers come alive just while they're on the journey of the education. So getting those promotions and raises just while you're pursuing your MBA is very unique. Um, for me personally, I was lucky enough to get three promotions just while going through the program. Um, I finished it up. But since graduating, I've had three more promotions um, out there as well. Though, so that series has taken me from entry mid-level management to executive global leadership. And I'm now in the process of starting a, another company. So, um, yeah, it, it's transforming. We talked about the price of you know, the overall cost of the school, the program, about forty six, forty seven thousand. dollars 47000 uh, the change in my income and what I'm able to do, it's far beyond that every year. So, I mean, as far as best investment ever and quickest payback, it's one of the smartest things I've ever done for myself. And for those I love and want to take care of, it's given me the opportunity to do that too. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Travis, just going right back to you, could you share maybe three memories or experiences during your time that really impacted your life? Oh, wow. Uh, so many. I, I was blessed, you know, and being in the class of 2018 and being in prior to that, I, I was able to be there when Jack was still alive and with us. And, you know, seeing not only the passion that he had for this program and for the professors and for the students, he genuinely cared. And every quarter he would come and do these kind of call, town calls where we could all join and talk to him, ask advice. I mean, that alone was just amazing. And it was just so invigorating to see every bit of himself that he put into this and how much it meant to him to see this school becoming and blossoming what it is. And now after his passing, I know he would just be thrilled. So I think a big part of it is that legacy that Jack has left to the world. This is an opportunity for all of us to step in and learn from the CEO of the century, according to Forbes magazine. And this is kind of his opus being taught by fantastic faculty, a support staff that's unbelievable, and an educational model that's just incredibly different. Um, so those professors, I mean, the engagement they have, the care they have for you, not just in the classroom and your knowledge, but every single class, that professor wants to know, what are your goals? Why are you here? What are you trying to accomplish? And it really provides an intimate, very bespoke educational experience because they try to make sure you're maximizing the learning in each and every one of those classes to help assist those goals. And then you're surrounded all the time by a fantastic community, not only that small intimate class, so every quarter you're running into new people from all over the world and making new friends just within that, but it lets you tap into over 5,000 student and alumni all over the world that are there for mentorships, um, you know, and get togethers. Carla talked about some of the networking that we do. Some of the best parts of that is people will come with business challenges. Hey, I'm running into this. Have y'all? And next thing you know, people are sharing ideas and helping each other. And that's even after being an alumni and doing things. So it's just this continuous 
area where we all are cheering for each other, celebrating successes and trying to push that into the world. And frankly, champion Jack's message, which was rid the world of bad managers. And uh, <laughs> it's a battle cry. It's going to take some work. But we're, we're, we're out there. We're working on it. <laughs> Carla, I want to ask you any memories um, from your time that you'd like to share. Oh my gosh, so many great memories. I mean, especially with with working here too. I mean, up until the day you know Jack passed away, I, I you know every day I communicated with him, and that, that in itself was in, incredible. But what I really love are the annual graduation ceremonies that we have here in Washington D.C. They're incredible, Anna. Um, we have students flying in from all over the world. We typically have the annual graduation ceremony in this beautiful hall right on the mall called the Andrew Millen Hall. And it is just so fantastic to see these students and their families and they come up, you know, being that I'm in missions, you know, they come up to you and they start hugging you and crying you and telling that's how, they, how you've improved their lives. And, you know, they are meeting their faculty that for the first time, it's just you know, really incredible. Our, our first live graduation, um, we had Kirk Cousins, who at the time was our, our Redskins NFL. He was our honorary Jack Welch and be a graduate. So we always have a really exciting, you know, keynote speaker. And of course, Jack and Susie uh, had, had always been there previously. Susie still comes every year. And it's just really fantastic. So that those graduation ceremonies that we have, and we turn it into like a, a three-day networking event. So those are some of the best memories, you know, seeing people celebrate all of their accomplishments. The first year that we had it, it was so exciting, you know, because Jack was up there and he, um, you know, shook the hand of every graduate and they would whisper in his ear, you know, I've got two promotions. I just became the vice president. And he would shout it out to the crowd and it was just really wonderful to see. So um, those have to be my my best, some of my best memories. That's so sweet and sentimental. Thank you guys for sharing both of those. Um, now, you know, on to a kind of a concluding thought for Carla, where do you think the program is going to go in the next three to five years? Yeah, well, I know it's going to continue to evolve. I uh, foresee us expanding our international population. Um, right now, our international students that are living internationally, we have a lot of students, you know, here uh, that have, uh, un, you know, from from other parts of the world. But uh, we have about student, students from about 83 countries around the world, as I mentioned. About 20% of our student population is international. I foresee us not only growing in overall population, but in percentage of our international population. By the end of the next year, I think we're, we're you know, forecasting it to be up, upwards of 35 to 40% of our students are gonna be international. So I really see that expanding. And I also see a lot of technology and innovation changes. Like I said, it just came from this leadership conference talking about all the exciting things that we're, we have planned out uh, down the road to be more, you know, the whole intention is to be more adaptable for the students. So we're constantly, you know, trying to figure out how is this student gonna best learn? Are we gonna customize their, their learning program? Are we gonna have them in a virtual situation, a real, a, you know, virtual reality situation? Um, are we gonna have avatars that are gonna be their personal tutors? I mean, so much exciting stuff when it comes to technology as well. And we're always gonna be on the cutting edge of that. So I'm excited for the next five years. Yeah, I'm excited too. I can't <laughs> wait to hear about it. <laughs> well, um, that's about our time. Thank you guys so much for coming and sharing about your experience and your program. Um, and before we conclude, Carla, I wanted to ask, could you please share how students um, might get in touch with your school if they're interested? I would love to. First and foremost, go right now to LinkedIn. Most of our students are on LinkedIn and find me. I'm the only Carla Bates Mueller um, on LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn, and then we can start communicating there. But also, of course, go to our website. It's really easy, jwmi.com. You'll find all the information we talked about here today and more. But more importantly, you'll be able to fill out a request for information uh, sheet. As soon as you log on to the website, you'll be asked to do that or given the option to do that. Um, and then when, uh, somebody from my team will immediately follow up with you. You'll be actually surprised to see how quickly they follow up with you. But jwmi.com and then connect with me on LinkedIn. Carla Bates Mueller, I'd love to hear from you. Okay, well, thank you guys once again. Thanks thank a lot. I appreciate it. Bye.